Welcome to Reader Syndicate 3.0, the next evolution of the look into counterculture that is canon. My name is Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds, and this started as a one-man mission for strain history and breeding science. Over time, it's evolved into something bigger, better, and more of a team effort. We will be joined by members of the Can Illuminati and other friends throughout the seasons to hear their takes on grow techniques, breeding science, strain history, and more. Our mission is to combat the narrative that corporate cannabis and seed posers are obfuscating for their own financial benefit. Welcome to the underground. We are the Syndicate. Um, any other any other grows you want to highlight, Kristen? Any other hacks that you found interesting for better or worse? Maybe that's the other side of it. I didn't really ask you guys if there were things that like you really didn't like. I know some of you did mention it, but hmm. Okay, what I something I didn't something I didn't like, but was I guess like market wise really good uh, was the Rainbow Sis S one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it produced like crazy, super pretty. It had like just a slight knuckle like structure to the flower, which is something that you know the market seems to go for is yeah. the like knuckly buds. Um, and it was potent as shit, but the, it, the quality of the smoke was just not so good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, and I mean, it's cookies based, you know, that's one of those things. Yeah. I, it's, it, it looks like it. I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's no denying that. Yeah. But I, w I will say that if there are there are bigger spots out here guys who are just you know like running you know buying you know u-hauls worth of oaky cuts and like running them just for the market out here yeah and you know some of those dudes are getting it to you know go so i would rather see that in the market because at least it works and yeah. it's something different yeah definitely Awesome. Okay. Well, maybe so the, the next part of this chat was meant to be about what you found. But like I said earlier, it's it's kind of impossible to talk about what you've grown without talking about what you found. So you guys already covered some of that. Maybe what we can do instead for this next part is actually talk about one thing I mentioned earlier, things you didn't like. Uh, that's one thing. But also maybe lessons you've learned. And that can that can that could relate to both what you've grown, but also like how you've grown things. If that makes sense. So maybe have have a think about what hasn't gone so well and what you've learned uh, from both the point of view of the genetics and the point of view of your growing. Um, Sean, maybe we'll bring it back to you. Yeah. Um, so things that I guess I did not enjoy um, most um, I grew out a bunch of Dominion stuff early, like back in like 2018, 2019 or so. I didn't really find anything. Um, what? I hear that accent. What'd you just say? What'd you just say about VA boy? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really enjoy much of it. Um, it just was just like a lot of just citrus, Don't you know, like the, the, any, like a lot of the screaming Eagle crosses and um, like the local skunks. I, I grew out. Yeah some of those and it was just you know citrus and and not really like what he said was on described as on the back i mean um the only one that was like kind of um good was the the one like the 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 crossroad chem um whatever it's called um hoodoo? yeah yeah there you go yeah hoodoo that was the only one that was like pretty decent um but all the other ones, you know, it was like they yielded well, but it was just like a lot of citrus. I mean, I guess the sangria punch, the sangria punch was actually good, but that was, it was like killer queen, um, killer queen screaming Eagle. So yeah. there was like a fruit punch Fino in there and, and that just tasted really well. Killer um, Queen's dope, really bro. It was a, yeah. I think they had the lone star cut of killer queen. If I remember correctly. I believe so. Um, and that one, that one was by far my favorite of, uh, 
any of the ones, uh, anything I grew by him and it was like, um, they had like this fruit punch, Fino, you know, and then they had one that was just like Clementine tasting and stuff that I had a friend that, uh, really loved. And I gave him kind of the rest of the seeds of the pack and he popped those and, and ran that for a while. It, kept a cut um that he really loved of just kind of like the the citrus finos um i preferred the the fruit punch um it's like a really nice um kind of more electric high but yeah um and it really long lasting um and then i guess some of the other ones i didn't really like the the la lemon tree um i did grow out for the la uh uh, chem D's and I just didn't really find anything I I was hoping for and I was growing them alongside um, the blue sours the appy f3s um, electric boogaloo appy which I forgot to mention earlier um, mm. which is phenomenal but um, the the appy f3s with just like the the couple phenos I found that were like this chem mango funk that was just really um mouth coating and everything mm-hmm. and the taste i just you know was like i'd rather have have this kind of thing because it's like a, a chem you know it's got the chem taste and then the the diesel phenos were all right but then three of the four were just short stout um of the la chem d and and you know i I may not have you know if i ever ran them from clone and ran, ran them again i caught, probably could have did better with them but I also, it, it wasn't, I didn't really find anything I was looking for. Like the potency wasn't, you know, the best thing, you know, the, the yeah. blue sours had better potency in some of the phenos. That's but right. The, CSI. The, the appy, the appy F, <laughs> the appy, the appies were, were, were really good too. And, and the, the electric boogaloo appy, it was just, I, they were the, the plants that were my least favorite of what else was going. Um, I'm not saying like it was bad, but just of everything else I was going there, my least favorite. Um, and then what else? Um, other than that, yeah, I guess that's kind of, it's kind of about it, I guess mm-hmm. that I haven't really liked. I know there's definitely some other ones in there. I just can't, um, think of it at, at the top of my mind. Yeah. I was going to say as well, um, I realized that my question is kind of a bit baity in the sense that you know maybe if if some of you are not comfortable naming specific things that you didn't like for various reasons you can just maybe tell us in general what you didn't like about it without naming it um, oh oh one i could i could yeah. uh oh also uh hefe's um <coughs> sensi star like f3s or whatever and then there's there's another one that's uh Fuck uh, your saints uh, uh, to a banana, a banana, cr- a banana tie <laughs> cross that I'm not gonna name, but it was just like this really just boring, just bubblegum terpenoline. You know, just all of them were just boring, like uh, citrusy um, terpenoline or bubblegum terpenoline, just like super boring. Yeah. <laughs> Yielded well and looked pretty though. Which one? Which one was that? Uh, it was a banana tie uh, hybrid. I'm just not gonna name. <laughs> oh shit! So and so. Yeah. Yeah. Noted. 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 Fuck that guy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it yielded well and was pretty and like uh, commercial wise and everything is probably good. But like, just the the what I found it wasn't what I was hoping for and and I was kind of you know told it was supposed to be more juicy fruit and not not like terpenoline and bubble gum and yeah you know like and that the the bubble gum terpenoline to me is kind of the most boring you really? know like, like bubble like, gum terpenoline uh, well no it was like i can't really describe it the the best but it's got like that bubble gum and then it goes to like this weird like weird thing it yeah. just not it just doesn't do it for me yeah, you need to make it move man it has to make it move for you <laughs> <laughs> so you it wasn't really what i was 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 trying to find um uh it's it smokes decent so i mean i guess that's all right it's just it's just not my cup of tea you know yeah yeah okay guys i a bit awkward but i'm gonna have to dip for another meeting um matt's gonna take over and yeah thanks again you guys for um joining us but yeah i will catch you guys soon
Peace. Bye, Dad. I, I had no idea they had Grinder at the North Pole where he's from. Anyways, um, so I think where are we at? Like, uh, uh, Kyle, did you go over yours? Uh, no, but I was just thinking of what I could, uh, what, I, which ones I didn't like. Uh, so there was actually one uh, which I was really uh, looking forward to was Great Chocolata, which was Great Pie and uh, Chocolate Tie from Canarado. Oh uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the ones that, that actually uh, were kind of okay, I thought the the high was just if they were all. Um, it was almost like you grew them too long. The high was just boring, just bland. It was just like, eh, well, you know, you got stoned, but that was it. It was almost like they were, you overgrown, you know, you grew them too yeah. long you type of thing every single time. Um, and then lessons would definitely be the Isaac Hayes. And that's from Dampering. Uh, because, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yo, Sammy's. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I grew those inside, and I definitely got some jungly type stuff. I and, bet, dude. And, well, and I also grow uh, tents in a garage, so I kind of deal with outside environment type stuff. Yeah, inside yeah. it's kind of weird. Yeah, so some, I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah, so during the summer when it gets in Cali, it gets hot. So yeah, it was yeah. they just they didn't they never stopped, and I, they were in one gallons, and I they without oh, with the bends they probably would have been twelve feet. I uh, bet. They were there, yeah, around the lights, and two of them were like that. Uh, so that was definitely interesting. So I definitely learned a lot there and reset everything, and uh, I haven't had that problem. Now, other ones weren't, weren't finishing as well, and I think it was definitely the heat uh, because I run stuff hot anyway with TLO. Yeah. Uh, it, so, yeah, I think that was – so it definitely that was a lesson, a big lesson right there. Because I mean, uh, for a while I had to completely reset, and uh, I remember even some some very nice people hit me up on the DMs and were like, "Hey man, uh, your stuff's not looking <laughs> too too good." So yeah, oh, uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. So shout out to uh, Skid Willie and Denali. <laughs> 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 and then uh, yeah, I grew the same uh, banana tie uh, I think that uh, Sean did, and mine yeah. were uh, remade tangy. So that wasn't uh, the greatest thing. I That's ended up, uh, yeah, I ended up throwing them uh, the jars out. Uh, actually, yeah, that'll do it. They were they weren't. Uh, yeah, I don't like tangy citrus. Is definitely not my thing. So yeah, I know. Yeah. So I will actually. I think uh, part of that other uh, the part of the uh, banana tie. It actually is more of the citrus part and i think that's what i got but yeah, yeah it was really weird it was just tangy yeah it was pretty bad so uh, yeah i'm not a tangy fan either yeah and then uh yeah man that's about it for i can't really think of too many you know i because uh, i just i most of them when i grow i know uh i do random stuff so a lot of stuff sometimes i'm not really looking i'm just looking to learn uh yeah. stuff type of thing especially since i'm newer uh i just want to see uh stuff so I do yeah. uh, S1s especially just to get a look under the hood type thing. So, yeah, no, it's a great uh, way to do it. It gives yeah. you a lot of really good data, especially S1s from, from a reliable source. It gives you uh, data points. You can you can speak on things more thoroughly. You can you get a much better understanding of traits. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot to it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and that's probably it for lessons and uh, stuff I didn't like that I can think of right off the bat. So. All right. So... From here, we're going to move on to what else you're looking for the future. Dun, dun, dun. Um, Sean, desired strains and traits. Uh, what we're going to have you guys do, you know, one after the other. Each grower shares what strains they are interested in growing out next. And then uh, discuss specific traits you're looking for, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So... Um... I know I think later on we, we're going to talk about like things we're growing next or whatever, but um, some of the things I am excited about and, and want to try and look for like certain traits. Um, so sleep disturbance, the, the P91 um, S1 uh, Blue Dream. Yeah. I'm going to be running that next. Um, I just like the Discord and everyone, everyone talking about the P91 S1. Um, I, I'm just really interested and I want to, you know, kind of see what that's about and hopefully, you know, get some phenos that are kind of more leaning that, um, but just kind of, you know, just get more markers on the, the blue dream crosses. Cause I'm going to, I got a decent amount of those that I want to run. Um, I ran the, the Monterey Bay dreams, which I really liked. And, um, I really like the Santa Cruz rec. So I kind of want to get through more of those, see more blue dream. Um, oh, yeah. And, and things like that. So I have, 
Um, and then as well as uh, the electric boogaloo dog shit. Um, like I got that and, and blue dream I have uh, more of the electric boogaloo appy to look at. And then the electric boogaloo um, mango haze. Um, and I really want to look through those as well. Um, the, the ones I got, which I think I, I got like the chem D mango um, green there crack. So mango many haze. Good ones in there. Yeah, the electric boogaloo. And I just, you know, kind of want to see both uh, parents in there. Get Because um, I haven't really grown any uh, true hazes. So uh, get some experience of that. Um, see things and, and also just, you know, try and find some really nice electric uh, work weed, um, which would be nice. And then also um, I have some of uh, Lucia's uh, Saurine 16 Destroyer that I really want to look through. No. And just find some, just really something really unique, um, like terpene profile and 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 high wise, um, just something that you know maybe a little bit trippy, um, and and just the description that I've heard of the Siren Sixteen being kind of like a blueberry OG, it's uh, so, that just sounds wonderful too. So it feels like blueberry muffin cereal, like yeah. it's so fucking good. It's really yeah. Good. So so I'm There's hoping no blueberry in it. Hoping to find something with like that kind of terpene profile with the, the destroyer effects. Um, I'm sure the souring effect uh, 16 effects are really great as well. Um, and then also his um, Malibu pure Kush uh, a five backcross. Yeah. I want to check those out as well. Um, and just, you know, grow some more uh, hay stuff, stuff that's like more unique. Um, not really what other people are necessarily growing. I know a bunch of people are about to start going into high and lonesome's uh, mayo haze, uh, yeah. but that's fine. I mean, everyone should that there's going to be a bunch of really cool stuff in there. Um, and you know, that's what I would kind of go to first, just so, you know, if you have the space and, and time and everything, um, just yeah. no unique versus like you can go and get chems and, and everything else, uh, not necessarily OGs as much anymore. You can find some OG hybrids here and there. Um, but like everyone's growing cookies and chem stuff and sour this and sour that. And so I, you know, I'm trying to like not keep growing that. I grew at a lot of sour hybrids. I'm just, and, and diesel hybrids in general. And I'm just yeah. kind of sick of those. Like it's massive hit or miss in those. Um, Dude, it is. It really I is. Wasted so much time. Um, I feel like <laughs> just, yeah, no, yeah. Just to find the final three I ran of of the the sour skunk dog, the blue sour, and the happy diesel, and then finally found those. And I'm just like, all right, like those are the only ones I'm gonna go back through and look through if um, when I do. Um, but yeah, just wasting time trying to like chase certain things um, that I felt worth were worth chasing at the time, and you know. It, it is what it is. You, you know, you, you live and learn. Uh, so I'm just trying to grow some more unique stuff. Um, get some, you know, experience growing more longer flowering stuff, uh, see different structures um, and just learn different techniques from seeing these structures on how to apply them, make them work for um, my space and, and everything. Um, I just, you know, kind of love experimenting and just plants in general. I, I work with plants. So just seeing how, everything grows and its growth structures, um, the different smells it produces. Um, it's, uh, like just the strength, some of the, the branches can get to, and I, you know, I enjoyed training at times. So it'll be fun with the hazes and everything when they start stretching to, to see what I can do with them. I, you know, I, I'm just trying to see as many things as possible. Um, and I try and run plants that have the same parents at the same time. So, if it is going to put out the father, like there's either going to be like a bunch of plants that are all the same fathers. Um, yep. And then just so I can, you know, notice those traits easier where I can be like, well, that line has this. And then that line ha also has this, the same father. Chances are it could be the father um, and just kind of just narrow it down and just learn little different traits and, and little like nuances of, of each little plant. Yeah, you know? dude, it's, well, it's a great way to do it. It's a really great way to do it to understand a line and the the haze lines like you know people always say like oh, i'm gonna grow this haze i'm gonna grow this piff you know like all that stuff but really that mango haze line one of the best 
uh, that Neville's Haze to me and in trying to find a good Neville's Haze now is very hard. Um, Mango Haze, Neville's Haze are the cream of the crop for hazes that are like commercially viable in the sense that most people in generally speaking, most people that are into weed will smoke them and like them. Like they're not so airy and fluffy again, generally speaking, cause they're in there that they're, they're going to look weird in a bag, any of that stuff like that. that. They're awesome. They're awesome. Yeah. So I think uh, that's probably about it of, of what I'm looking um, forward to and just kind of what I'm exactly looking for. It's, it's more, you know, like, trying to see different traits and certain um, things and just gain experience and also, you know, find some kind of unique racy high that um, will also be good for, you know, aches and pains, but uh, won't make me too stupid to work, but will yeah. keep me alert. All right. Uh, screw what you got. Um, yeah, right now I have uh at week four, I have the Skylines from H and L. Okay, and that's uh, uh, what, what's in that? The Shoreline by Appalachia. Sweet, sweet. And um, and then I just flipped some of the uh, garbage clouds from Pack. The um, Shoreline by Santa Cruz Blue Dream. It's a good way to see the Shoreline stuff. See what it's like. Yeah. Well, I'm, Wait, I mean, I'm, you, yeah, that was your thing, right? Like Shoreline. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of, yeah. <laughs> I, I was a little bit uh uh annoying about it, but no, it, I mean no, I, like that was your chase though. That's like your, your thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been that was like the weed that you know, the it wasn't the first really good weed that I had. Yeah, but it was the first really good weed that I had that made me stop buying swag. Yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. it was like oh shit. I, I'll just like spend this? 40 bucks, right. you know? Yeah. Um, and so, and I've, I've been like trying to get a hold of a cut and, uh, you know, there's been a total fucking noob about it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and finally I did end up getting it. Yeah. Um, and God damn, is it hard to fucking like hit right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, a, that's a wily cut, bro. Uh, like just looking at it it looks fucking yeah it looks like it would be very hard to to grow consistently to nail every time um yeah yeah and and there's also you know like not only is it hard but like the flavor i don't know it's weird it's like the better you grow the flowers at least from how i've been doing it mm -hmm. the better that i get the flowers to set the worse the flavor is that's weird so, yeah yeah um and it, it, it just, it's not like, it doesn't last very long. Yeah. So out of those two lines, I'm hoping to find something that's a little bit easier to nail that has improvements on like flavor and, you know, maybe a weird twist to the smell. Yeah. The appy one sounds like a, a good, good hole to climb down for that too. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm hoping that, and you know, the, uh, I ran the wet dream. Yeah. Um, and my buddy down here, Donnie, he ran uh, the Dream Killers. Okay. And it seems, I don't know, the, that blue dream note in there really like carries a quality factor to it in yeah. the smoke. I love blue dream. Like, but like, again, I got to qualify that. Most people, like, when you say you love blue dream, they're like, oh, I hate that shit because they never got to smoke the cut that we all grew back in the day. And, um, and, and, or, if they did it probably wasn't grown that well and, you know and some people's you know chemistry doesn't line up with but i really love that cut the high the quality um even the flavor like even though it's like a terpinaline kind of base i don't know it's it's fucking rad yeah which i was one of those people who hated on blue dream for a long time because yeah you know me and my buddies back in the day sold a lot of very bad blue dream yeah um and it just like poured into here Jeez, for a long everywhere. time yeah by the dump um, but the actual you know like actually well done blue dream stuff is pretty good man like yeah. killer killer yeah 
Yeah, there's yeah, a reason I, that cup blew up. Yeah, I, I have a couple of other Shoreline hybrids also. Um, the Shoreline by Cough by Vietnam Black. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. From H&L. The Shoreline by Mango Haze, uh, nice. also from H&L. And the Shoreline by A5 Backcross from Louche. Oh, nice. And it's, in those, I'm I'm more like looking for, you know, just it, that's more of like an adventure. Like I'm looking for yeah. weird, new, you know, like stuff that, you know, hopefully is just super radically different than, yeah. you know, the normal. Yeah, well, that's a great place to start for it. All yeah. right, is that is that about it for you on that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking through some other blue bonnet. I I, I stay steady popping blue bonnet hybrids. <laughs> Better. Yeah. Um, it, they're good, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I get stuck with it for a reason, you know. Like, it, it's very hard to find a, anything that breeds true in the first place and that's that reliably pa passes traits. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things where even for, as a, from a breeding perspective, I don't even really think about it from a customer perspective. I think about it from a breeding perspective. Um, it's just really, really hard to nail that a, a perfect male that I, I think is perfect for breeding. So yeah, I, I still haven't really moved on. I'm just going through the hybrids now. Um, yeah, probably going to reproduce bubbleberry this summer. We'll see how that goes though. We'll see. Okay, Kyle, what you got? All right. Well, uh, see, I'm looking forward to uh, the, going through the third round of these uh, chocolate-tied Skittles. To okay. Make the final right. final selections, because uh, yeah, now it's just narrowing it down to basic. You know, what which ones give me the the highest, basically. Yeah, I uh, like it. I liked it. Uh, you definitely got that that funk, the earthy yeah. funk in there, and those are the ones that I like. The, the, yeah. Uh, the, there was some other ones. Uh, one was we were talking about the, on the Discord the other day. It was actually uh, dryer sheets, yeah. but more of a downy. Downy like a oh, nice. fabric softener, I like that well. maybe not yeah. dryer. So, yeah, it was really weird. Uh, uh, that that the high was okay on that one. It wasn't yeah. the, the 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 definitely not like the that that armpit funk that you know you said the skittles. Uh, yeah, cube, yeah. Cube the Z cube, yeah, yeah, yeah. Z cube, yeah. Uh, then see what else uh, I got coming up. I got some uh, Blue Dream uh, S ones. Yeah. Um, uh, Santa Cruz Rex. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, some Black Poison from the Rev. Uh, those are those I'm really looking forward to because uh, I ended up finding out uh, it was an older pack and uh, I recently got a hold of him through email and uh, he said the, he doesn't even recognize them so he's pretty sure those are F1s based on you know I sent him a leaf picture and stuff like that yeah and so I'll probably do something with those just to make more seeds uh, because yeah. I would definitely want to look through F2s of those because that has uh, his own Vietnam black. And then it also has his uh, old school Durban, uh, what he calls Durban Poison Bros. So, yeah. Uh, and then it has Nebu Black Russian in it. So, yeah, that yeah. definitely would. That sounds pretty good to me, man, to look through a little bit of. I love um, that line, dude. I, 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 I grew so much Black Russian stuff. It's unreal uh, throughout my career. Like early on, I focused like I do with Bonnet. I Like a good seven or eight years, I focused on Black Russian stuff and Blackberry stuff. So, yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, and then the other stuff. Uh, see, I got some uh, Super Servo Haze S ones tribute from uh, Old Sog. Yeah, uh, and then uh, some uh, Ch uh, Cherry Malawis F uh, threes from uh, the Rev two. So that's basically what I got coming up for quite a bit. So just trying to get through all those. All uh, right. Yeah. Well, now we'll get down to experimental techniques. Dun, dun, dun. So, like anything you guys are trying to incorporate. Um, different techniques, technologies, um, and the uh, potential risk benefit, you know, ratios. Um, I, you know, this isn't going to apply to everyone. Like with me, I, I just stick with my shit. <laughs> like having never tried LEDs, like, you know what I mean? So I know that's not going to be for everyone, but, um, if any of you want to talk about this, feel free to speak up. Like if there's anything that you've been incorporating new that maybe you haven't otherwise, or, uh, yeah. Anybody? Free shot? Uh, about the only thing new that I've been doing the past uh, probably like year or so has been adding um, hydrogen peroxide into the bottom of my clone trays. Yeah, I've been digging that, but like grow-wise, 
Nah, I'm kind of stuck in my ways. Yeah, I feel you there, dude. Sean, you got anything? Yeah, um, I'm pretty much stuck in my ways, grow wise. I I have thought, you know, about trying uh, cocoa and you know doing that a little bit or try a little bit of more like synganic um, approach. But man, I'm busy with work and everything, and and you know I'm just you know, stuck in my ways, not really trying to, to venture out until I have a little bit more space where I can uh, have like an experimental um, area and then have, you know, kind of a, a main flower spot. Um, and then, yeah, when I have some more space, then that's probably when I'll try out some more new things, but nothing really like new, new techniques or anything that's like cutting age or anything like that. Yeah. Kyle, you got anything? Uh, no, nothing. Cause, uh, I was just waiting for the new, you know, rev book, you know, make yeah. sure you go, go pick that up. <laughs> yeah, definitely go buy that book. Um, it, there's a forward written by probably by the most handsome, um, seed maker ever. So biggest dick, <laughs> check it out. Um, uh, yeah, I was yeah. waiting for that. And I just do, uh, I was just waiting for more of the, um, little additions that he does. Cause, uh, after that reset, I haven't been doing, I was just doing kind of plain water. And now yeah. I've been, I just was waiting to now he's kind of, I think he's finished up with kind of his experiment type stuff that where he's confident, I think where he's got his grow where he wants it. So I was just wait, kind of waiting for that. Type yeah. Of thing. So, yeah. So real quick, Kyle, do either of us that you know of have the 1979 calendar or is that one of the ones that was missing? Uh, which one? Because actually, I what I'm finding out is there is actually the cannabis calendar started 73. And those are not the Brotherhood of Eternal Loved Ones. Okay, yeah. No, this one's the um, Sinsamia one. Yeah, okay. Now that one, that one is from KO. It's from who? The KO. KO? The, KO? Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's the Sinsamia techniques, yeah. And I, I, actually, I, I have that one. Okay, I finally got it on the way. I'm stoked. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are, and, and there is other ones of those. I think there's two other ones of those. Okay, that makes sense that that would be chaos then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those again, actually, yeah, the pictures are some of the ones that are in the book, the Sensimia technique. Okay. Yeah, they're, 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 they're just bigger, which is, is really cool. It's a cool yeah. calendar. Yeah, they're really cool. Yeah. And actually, I, I picked up a few. I uh, just got another one too. It's I posted the uh, the cover, but I, I've got to open up the package. So it's uh, the Cultivator's 77 uh, calendar. Oh, really? So, yeah. Do, do I, I have do. that one? No, the, uh, these are, I've been picking up a lot of different ones. I have a Normel 76 one, which has a double cover. It's missing two things. I have a lot of weird, I've been finding a lot of crazy ones, man. It's really well, Yeah, weird. be scanning them. Be scanning oh, them. Oh, get them up. oh, yeah. They're all in, they're all in Discord. Awesome. And, uh, also, yeah. On the, Thank uh, you. The thing. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. For, for people who don't know, we have stuff like that in the Discord. Um, like a lot of these old calendars have a lot of the old, I mean, pictures of the strains, like, the Acapulco Gold, the Panama Red, um, Oaxacans, Guerreras, stuff that like we hear about today. And um, maybe you'll see Barney's Farm say they sell, um, but that's not really the case. And to have point of origin, like time of origin pictures, and to be able to look at those, be able to get whatever, you know, visual data points and traits that you can see um, is super helpful, especially when they describe it, you know, like... Uh, word for word like um r r the connoisseur used to do so yeah um yeah and sorry. that's the 79 has a uh has some great uh pictures of colombian in there and, it, yeah, and, and what i noticed is they didn't have, have a lot of serrations oh interesting yeah so that's what that was that was that's what i took away from it and that now is i don't know now i don't know what they did to it but they were going to i don't think they would have just you know, spend a lot of time. They were trying to hide it. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> Especially in those pictures, they're all tied down and stuff. So yeah, I don't think exactly. they would have been cutting off serration. So yeah, I just, I yeah. Thought that's, that's one thing I took away from that. So I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. I think someone on the show before was saying that Columbium was all serrated. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Sorry for the aside. Yeah. Okay. No, but we can so, go forever uh, on that. I know. I just nerd out on, <laughs> like, I just, just saw it pop up on eBay and I'm like, <laughs> got it um what makes a keeper for you guys so uh sean this is kind of a rough i don't know man it's kind of an on-the-spot question um what makes a keeper for you um so i do like to pick um based off of structure but then also um 
so structure it's you know how how quickly it'll grow um i usually don't like things that are too slow in veg i like you know be able to do like a if i'm doing like a quick seed run do like four to six weeks um and then be good enough to run them some things from seed if i'm just trying to do like a quick uh run to see what see what they're about uh, you know will take you know two months or or so the veg and and even running from clone may you know take um double the time than it would than the ones that are much quicker in seed form um so so i do like things that grow a bit quicker um and then the plants that like to support themselves um not much staking um obviously there are ones that um you need to stake and and they're they're amazing plants and it that's just something you have to deal with um but i do like um, a more sturdy structure that is vigorous and and then um yields not necessarily the most important thing to me uh yeah. sometimes it's nice but i'd rather have the the flavor translate fully and, and be mouth coating as long and then as long and then as well as have um the effects you know <clears throat> be what i'm looking for um whether it's it's something for for the daytime um to have at work or or just you know nighttime you know try and just chill relax um maybe just you know completely take the the mind off of things and and for you know just forget and be able to zone out and and get some good sleep um so really those are kind of the parameters i'm kind of selecting off of um mostly effects uh being number one effects and then flavor and then structure um there have been plants that were more floppy that i really do love um but I do, you know, prefer plants that have a little bit more sturdy structure that I don't necessarily have to stake or um, trellis too much. Um, but I will trellis or stake those heavily if, you know, if needed, like the original sin, um, some of those needed more heavier yeah. staking and okay. things like that. And, you know, I love those. Um, the, the Appy Diesels, those were actually like pretty pretty sturdy um they That's didn't wild. need much staking yeah um, and, and the couple phenos i really liked um and they got really like nice big and bushy um but yeah i i, I love plants you know just the flavor the flavor and, and it has to be mouth coating um if i'm gonna keep it for the flavor wise um there are so many so many jokes i'm holding back right now on <laughs> let them go <laughs> all day all day <laughs> <laughs> every time <laughs> yeah yeah it's gonna be uh you're gonna put it on the soundboard in a second <laughs> yeah, right. it's my yeah. yeah i think i think that's it um you know effects and then you know flavor and and then you know the structure after that all right screw what do you got what is your definition of a keeper uh i've been Really, it's just more, it's the stuff that I want to smoke, you know, because I only smoke like what I grow and what my friends, you know, in our little group down here yeah. grow. Um, but I guess to to kind of use a, a phrase that, that locals said, um, I like weed with character. Like... Yeah. So whether that, you know, the only stuff that I really don't like is citrus types, honestly, yeah, like yeah. everything else. I mean, if, if it's good, it's good. I came into the syndicate with a lot of like, I don't like this. I don't like that. Yeah. And then just through like growing and like trying my friends who were growing, you know, other stuff. I found good types of that. Like I didn't used to like fruit types, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. that's fair. That, you know, but if, if it's good, it's good. Yeah. All right, Kyle, what makes a keeper for you? Uh, pretty much everything that Sean said, basically. 
I mean, the effect, uh, I mean, taste, uh, and then structure. And then, you know, if it's going to be a pain in my ass uh, over time, uh, I definitely don't want it. Because I, I notice that our stuff, especially clones, after about a uh, year and a half, two, that's when they start getting kind of funky. Yeah. And then that, that's usually when I've already ran them about twice by then, usually, because uh, I don't usually, I don't run seed. I run everything from uh, cuts. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that would be, that would, for me, what it is. All right. Um, if you guys want to give any examples of any keepers that you have, um, so I, I don't know if you guys have already done that or not. Like trying to think back into our conversation. Um, yeah, mine yeah. would just be the banana tie. So banana for, tie as of right now. So Fuck yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sean, what do you got? Currently, um, I have none, but of of what up just because of the work being done and not being able to keep things. But sure. of what I'm going to go back through. Um, to look for keepers that I already know offhand are going to be Santa Cruz Rec, um, EB Appy, the, the Electric Boogaloo Appy, um, mm-hmm. and then Original Sin, and then the Appalachian Diesel. And then I do want to go back into the Blue Resin to look through that line more as well. Um, there's some phenomenal plants in that um, that, I, that I need to just – go back through and, and do a larger pop and try and find the one I want to keep. Yeah. There's some wild testing plants in that line. I've told people before, but I, I don't know. Uh, um, it doesn't really stick, but yeah, like anomalous, anomalously wildly testing plants in there. Um, that Kush cut from resin lung was just something else. Something yeah. I had else. one that was like blueberry cotton candy. Yeah. It was just like, and then maybe like a little bit of earthiness on the back end that was just yeah. like really really good, dude. Once you hit once you hit real blueberry, like that actually tastes and smells like it. Mwah, no going back. What about you, Screw? Uh, I I hold on to a lot of things right now, um, mm-hmm. but there's some stuff that you know I don't know. I who knows how many years I'll hold on to onto it. Uh, like because I the way I see it, if I find something that fulfills that like same role and is better then i'll just keep that yeah that um, makes sense. you know like i have uh i went through so for instance like i have a uh, tuscan leather uh number one tuscan that my leather. buddy yeah that my buddy popped mm-hmm. and uh it's kind of citrusy but i guess um I don't know. I guess it's like a, it's super complex though. Still, it's yeah. the um, and when I when I ran the uh, Death in Venice, it was pretty much the same um, type of smells and flavors and stuff, just way worse. Yeah. Uh, same with the effects and all that. So yeah. Um, like right now, I'm holding on. Triangle choke is something that I'm I love to death. And yeah. I've been, I don't think I'll be dropping that one um, anytime soon, at least. Uh, sure. I, I mean, I, I do want to go through four more packs of it to see if, you know, like if I found that out of two. Yeah, imagine. Yeah, if I could find a better version of it, hell yeah. Um, yeah right. Same with uh, the Chemsys S1 by Blue Bonnet. Yeah. Um, I saw the potential in it and like, don't get me wrong. It's good. It's the cut that I hold on to is good. Yeah. Um, it just, the earthiness really kind of like comes in full force at the end and Dude, bullies yeah. the, the blueberry and like the nasty. So in, in, in that blueberry, there is earthiness in some of those expressions and that's, Everything I've tried breeding away from because it is so strong in, in DJ's blueberry. So strong. And it's just the one thing because it can overpower the berry part to where you just kind of like, mm, yeah, I smell the berry, you know. So those are the ones that I always try to breed away from. It's, it, it sucks. And when you cross it to something like Chem D that also has earthiness to it or Chem, the Chem Sys S1, which is like a, a very similar to Chem D in its uh, cannabinoid scent expression. Um, yeah. That, that earthiness is definitely in there. Yeah, it. I'm I'm actually seeing that in the uh, the bubbleberry that I'm that I have at week four right now. It's like moldy blueberries, not yeah. like bubble ooh, gum. Yay, blueberry! It bubble smells like gum has, 
a lot of earthiness in it too a lot like a lot it could be very hard to work against uh very dominant very very dominant type uh strain when you cross to it yeah all right kyle Oh, we're still going to the keepers? Or the oh, owners? yeah. Again, you already said Benanti, huh? Yeah, Benanti for now. Yeah, that's, uh, yes, that's the one that's I right. found. Yeah, if there's something else, uh, yeah, I'll keep it. <laughs> All right. All right. So, I don't know. Is there anything any of you guys want to say? Like, you know, you've seen these episodes forever, right? Um, is, there, is there anything you guys want to say? Like, that you've always, you know, if you could have inserted anything in any episode that you'd want to tell people, uh, feel free to now. Sean, anything? Um, I would say go and grab the mango hay stuff and, and run and run some unique stuff. Um, I mean, I, I guess it's kind of said every show, but you know, don't keep running what everyone else is running, do something unique. Um, but yeah, that's that's probably about it. Don't be a cheap buy. Uh, screw what you got. Uh, well, I guess it's something we're gonna cover over uh later, but. The whole clone chasing game. Oh yeah. It, you know, try, I ch I chased one thing for sixteen years before yeah. getting it, and now I'm ready to try. Like I'm way more excited about the hybrids. Yeah. And yeah. the stuff that y'all can find in seed is if you choose the right seed. Like I totally get if you're popping funky shit and just kind of like getting a you know mids roller coaster then it doesn't seem like it's worth it and like that's all you'll need to elevate your grow but nah just get legit seeds grow yes. it like a normal person don't you know do a bunch of weird shit like we see <laughs> some people come in talking about yeah yeah and you'll you'll do all right yeah man the clone chasing game's brutal i did that with hp 13 forever forever and the hybrids are so much better than the clone. But it was because, like, back when I was young, read the Canna Bible, and it was like, oh, this is the one. So, of course, I'm like, oh, this is the one? That's the one? I'm going to chase that. And everybody was chasing it, and nobody would give it up. Nobody. And then you finally get it all these years later. It's like, oh, that's, that's cool, you know? Um, yeah, let's, like... It's, it is the difference between elite clones and your own keepers and being able to run through seeds teaches you a lot. Like the people that are selecting a lot of these quote unquote elite clones are doing it from like one or two seeds in a pop in a closet. And like, it's just how well they hype it, um, who their friends are that they pass it to. And that makes the difference between an elite versus your own keeper. In my opinion, uh, well, I don't know if any of you guys have opinions on that. And they're they're you know you have no idea how high the likelihood that they picked that one over you know a sibling oh, yeah. because yeah. of the marketability or the bag of you know like stuff that you might not care about as as a factor yeah yeah absolutely do you, i mean like do you guys have any opinions on elite clones versus your own keepers sean kyle either of you uh, well, what I've noticed from elites, because there's certain stuff that just doesn't, uh, what people think of elite like Cam and Bubba, uh, those highs for me are not what they are for other people. Yeah. Uh, they're more just kind of whatever. So Cam has always been more sativa, uh, high, what people would call that. I hate using that word, but I know that's how people can kind of identify what I'm talking about. Uh, and I think they're more breeders. They're better breeders. I've I found the Bubba hybrids have always been really good for me, but I've never had good just plain Bubba to me. Um, yeah. Maybe it could have been the grow, but I've tried different ones over the years, and it's always just been the same. Uh, but I always liked hybrids. So I think, to me, what Elite is uh, for clones is always maybe they're better breeders. They're not always good as smoke. Yeah. So type of thing. That's what I find and That's obviously it. my keepers is uh i'm looking for i'm looking for good smoke because it's all heads for me so yeah all right you haven't sure. had uh any experience growing any elite clones or anything um like that but i would say that's probably it's also kind of subjective um obviously there's ones that have just been around for a long time 
um, that everyone kind of unanimously agrees on. But then there's other ones, you know, that have been around a long time that um, not too many people have have seen. And then like um, Screw was saying, like he was chasing Shoreline and whatnot. And I'm pretty sure that's a cut that's like pretty difficult to get. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of fake Shoreline out there for so many years because the main guy who had it dipped offline for a long time. Yeah, and that's that's a long time to you know chase something and then not be completely you know thrilled about it. Um, I've never been one to even try and go and buy any clones from anyone or any of the the clone dealers. I'm just not really interested. If yeah. uh, you know if someone offered me uh, one of the leads or whatever, I, I may take it. But I I don't know if I'm like too interested in growing. Like there's very few that I am interested in growing. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm more interested in growing people's uh, selections that they've found kind of out of like uh, recent, recent things, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, <laughs> just, I don't want to end up getting someone's old clone, you know, and end up having <laughs> it just destroy everything. Oh yeah. Um, Mendo Mendo Mike. Mike. yeah. You know, that's been yeah. my, that's the Mendo been my Mike. Yeah. <laughs> the Mendo thrip Mike. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's, that's been my thing also with not wanting to get clones. I I and I'm a person that kind of likes to to do things on their own. Um, so I'm trying to find something from seeds and and you know kind of then breed that into something that I then enjoy myself, or just find something from seed that I really enjoy and just keep that and be like I'm I'm really happy with it. Yeah. Now that all makes sense, bro. Well, I guess like that's kind of, I, I know you wanted me to go two hours, but this is kind of like the, the end of it, wrapping it up. Um, so with that said, any last thoughts? Um, Sean, any shout outs, anything like that? Um, nah, nah, not that I can think of. I mean, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I appreciate it. And no, uh, we appreciate you, man. One of the few other punk rockers in the group, bro. Like, you gotta stay strong. Uh, screw, you got any final words? Uh, thanks for having me on. And um, I guess thanks to everybody in the syndicate just for, you know, making the place what it is. Fuck yeah, dude. Um, and, and like, the syndicate is all of us, you know, like, that's the thing. Like, it's it's become quite a, a, a close friendship for all of us. Like, not not just like the can Illuminati dudes, but everybody that's been a part of the syndicate. It's grown and grown and grown. And uh yeah, which also grows the inner circle too, which is pretty fucking cool. You know, we get to find the people that we really, really um I don't know, connect with. Kyle, what you got? Uh yeah, that's just thanks for having me and yeah, man, this was a good time. So that's it. Shout out to the doggy. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. I was I'll give him, <laughs> kick him some love for you. Absolutely. Yeah, please do, dude. That, uh, yeah, that dog's amazing. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much. And uh, I guess we'll see if we can get this posted Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I don't know when it will be, but we're, we're going to find out. So I appreciate you guys. Want to sit at the table with the syndicate? Check out our Patreon and our link tree or description below. Our merch site is officially live. We have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG, and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.